All right, welcome back to Unit 5. Well, I guess this is the first time we're looking at Unit 5, but welcome back. Um, we are going to be looking at trigonometry in this unit. We did a little bit of trig in Math 10, and we, I'm just going to do a quick short review of what we did. Um, so recall in Math 10, we, are deal we dealt with um, right triangles, and uh, we can actually name all these three sides based on where we are uh, we, you know, which angle we're looking from. Okay, so let's say this is the angle that we're looking from. Then this longest side is always the hypotenuse. Okay, that will always be there. That doesn't change. Um, the side that is opposite from the angle theta is what we call the opposite side. And the side that's next to the angle theta is what we call the adjacent side. Now, based on this triangle, we came up with three primary trig ratios, namely sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta, right? So sine theta, if you recall, is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. Okay, so the sine th ratio, okay, the ratio for sine theta is opposite side divided by hypotenuse side. The length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse side. Cosine is adjacent, cosine theta is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Okay, so the cosine ratio is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Tangent ratio is opposite divided by adjacent. Okay, so if you, I'm sure your teacher showed you this, it's Sokatoa. Okay, Sokatoa. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hy hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so this is what we did um, in Math 10. Okay, so now we are going to take this and we're going to um, do a little bit more than just that. Okay, we are going to relate primary trig ratios again, sine, cosine, and tangent to angles in standard position. Okay, so that's new, and we're going to solve some problems with trig uh, using trig ratios. Okay, so here is the first thing that I need to show you. Okay, it says using the diagram below, write an expression for so part A R in terms of x and y. So here is a diagram. This is actually what we call the angle in standard position. So actually, I'm going to go to the definition here first. So here it says angle in standard position. It means angle theta is measured counterclockwise, so from the positive x-axis. So here is the positive x-axis. It This angle theta is measured counterclockwise, so it's this direction, right, counterclockwise, between the x-axis and this. This is what we call the terminal arm. Um, so that's what well, this angle theta is angle in uh, standard position because it is measured from the positive x-axis. It goes, it rotates counterclockwise and it um, terminates at this line and this is called a terminal arm. Okay, so this is called a terminal arm. Terminal point is simply the point on the terminal um, arm. So this is the terminal point. Okay, so I'm not going to define it. It's basically right there. Terminal arm is the line in which the angle terminates. Terminates. Terminal point is simply any point on the terminal arm. So this is angle theta in standard position. Again, because it's measured from the positive x-axis and it's measured counterclockwise. Okay, so now let's see. Um, here's the diagram again. So I'm going to erase. I'll keep it there. It's fine. Um, we're going to express r in terms of x, y. So here's r from 0, 0 origin to the point p. This line is r. I'm going to, uh, okay, I'm going to erase it because it's kind of messy here. Um, so now we can actually draw a triangle, right? Obviously, because I mean, we're in the trig unit. This point has coordinates of x, comma, y, which means this right here is length x. And this right here will be length y. Right, because that's the x coordinate, and so this is how far away from the origin, which means that's the width or that's the length right here. And y is the y coordinate right here again, that is the distance from the origin uh, vertically, so that is the length right there. So, this is a right triangle, and I'll, hopefully, you recall we can relate um, these three side length using Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So that's part A. Okay, part B is as the value theta in terms of x and y. So we are trying to relate the angle theta right here. I, 
and then um, the side length x and y. Now this is the tangent ratio, right? So tangent theta is equal to opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So this is opposite from the angle theta, so that's y, that's the opposite side. Adjacent side is right beside the angle theta, so that's x. Now this is tangent theta is equal to y over x, but we want to uh, relate value of theta. So now we actually need to solve for theta. So hopefully you recall if you're looking for angle theta, you need to take the inverse trig ratio. Okay, so inverse tangent of y over x. So that's how you relate um, angle theta with x and y. Okay, part C is as the coordinates of p in terms, oh, sorry, the x coordinate of p in terms of r and theta. So we are looking to relate r, theta, and x. So then you can see this is the adjacent side, that's hypotenuse side, and that's angle theta. So to relate those, th th those three uh, quantities, what we need to do is using cosine theta. Cosine theta is equal to x divided by r. Right? That's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side. Now we want the x coordinate of p, so we need to solve for x. And to do that, we simply multiply by r on both sides, you get x is equal to r cosine theta. Similarly, for part d, we are looking to relate the y coordinate of p in terms of r and theta. So y coordinate is here, and this is y, so that's the opposite side. Here is the r, the hypotenuse side, and theta. So the one that relates all those three will be sine theta opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. Again, we are looking to isolate for y because we want a y coordinate. So you multiply both sides by r, you get y is equal to sine r sine theta. Okay, so this, that's the first four. Um, hopefully that is okay with you, okay? Because, I mean, we basically take what we learn from math 10. Right, these three is what we learned from Athen, and we just do a little bit of something with them to get to something that's kind of new. Not, really, I mean, it's not really new. It's just isolating for x and isolating for y, right? It just looks different, but really, it's just essentially it's the same thing. Okay, so that's part A to part D. This is new Pythagorean identity. So again, Pythagorean theorem states that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Well, we now have an expression for x, we now have an expression for y. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in to x. So instead of our x squared, okay, so instead of x squared, I'm going to say r cosine theta squared. Right? Again, x is the same as r cosine theta. So I'm going to say x squared is the same as r cosine theta squared. Same thing for the y. y is the same thing as r sine theta, so I'm going to say r sine theta squared, and this equals r squared, so that doesn't change. Now I'm going to expand this. r cosine theta is one single term, so when we square, we remember you gotta, you don't need to FOIL, right, because it's not r plus or r minus, it's not a binomial, so when you square this, it's simply just going to be r squared cosine theta squared. So notice how I write cosine theta squared as cosine squared theta. That's how you write cosine. So this, let me put this on the side. Cosine square theta, okay, is equivalent to cosine theta square. That's just how mathematicians decided to write cosine theta squared. Okay, so it's cosine square theta. Uh, and we multiply our sine theta squared. So if we do that, we get r squared sine theta squared or sine squared theta. And this is again equal to r squared. Now, you notice how we have r, theta, r squared here, r squared there, and r squared there. So that means we can divide everything by r squared. Okay, we can divide each term by r squared. In that case, you get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. And this is what we call the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so again, you can divide this by r squared, divide this by r squared, divide this by r squared, then you get the result right there. Okay, um, this will be useful um, next year, really. Um, but I mean, it, 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 it's not that difficult. Um, so I decided to show you. Um, yeah, so there you go. Now, this is the Pythagorean identity. Okay. 
hopefully the first page was uh was okay okay let, let me just give you a heads up right now okay this unit uh if you're taking pre-calc 12 next year to me i think this unit is most uh, by far the most important unit in pre-calc 11 for pre-calc 12 okay because there's a lot of trick in pre-calc 12 so you need to make sure you learn this unit well okay um okay so I'm going to move on to next page and I'll show you some examples okay to solve some problems okay so example number one is as the point p 3 comma 4 is on a terminal arm of an angle in standard position so right away I'm going to draw the diagram 3 comma 4 so I'm going to draw my axes first 3 comma 4 is somewhere there okay here is 3 comma 4 uh, it's on the terminal arm, right? So here's my terminal arm, and there's my terminal point, and here is my angle theta, and here's my 90 degrees angle. Determine the distance r from the origin to p. So here is the uh, the distance r um, from origin to p. I'll tell you this right now, okay? The reason why we call it r is because um, again, you probably don't need this right now, but this is the unit circle that we that we are that we're looking at um, you can see here is r right that's the radius of the circle it doesn't have to be in a circle it's just a, a circle because we can actually rotate around right so there's r that's my uh, radius okay anyways so that's why it's called r i think we'll talk more about that later on okay so if this p coordinates of p is 3 comma 4 that means this length is 3 and this length is 4 okay it says determine the distance r from origin to p um, okay well in that case so that's the first question i guess this is part a uh, so part a what i need to do is well r squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared right we can use pythagorean theorem to solve for r so r squared is equal to 9 plus 16 r squared is equal to 25 square root both sides you get r is equal to 5. well both positive negative 5 right but i mean we're looking at distance so then we are just looking at uh, the positive value so r is equal to 5. okay part b primary trick ratio of theta okay so that means we're looking for sine theta cosine theta and tangent theta okay so sine theta so now we know r is equal to 5 so this is the 3 4 5 triangle that um it's famous I don't know if you know about it, but it's the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Uh, sine theta is simply opposite side divided by the hypotenuse side. So again, here's angle theta. So opposite side will be 4. So that would be 4 over hypotenuse, which we just calculated to be 5. Cosine is adjacent, which is 3, divided by hypotenuse, which is 5. Tangent is opposite side divided by adjacent side, so 4 over 3. So that's part B. Part C, we're looking for the measure of angle theta. So again, anytime you're solving for angle theta, you need to take the inverse trig ratio. So you can pick one of these three. It does not matter which one you pick, okay? They will give you the same result. Ultimately, we're looking at the same angle theta. That's why it does not matter which one you pick. It will give you the same result. Therefore, I'm just going to pick the first one. So sine theta is 4 out of 5. So again, to solve for theta, you need to take the inverse sine of 4 over 5. Okay, and if you put this into a calculator, I have no idea what this is. Um, this will give you 53. Does it say round to? Okay, it doesn't say. So I'm just going to round to the nearest degree. So 53 degrees. It's actually 53.13, but I'm just going to say 53 degrees. Okay, so that's the first example. Again, th th basically this is what we did in the previous page. Okay, all right, example number two. It says if cosine theta is 5 out of 13 with theta in the first quadrant, what is sine theta and what is tangent theta? Okay, so now we have um, angle theta in the first quadrant. So here's angle theta. And again, I'm going to draw my triangle right here. It says cosine theta is 5 out of 13, which means the adjacent side is 5. The hypotenuse side is 13. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? Because cos the ratio for cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's why this is 5 and that's 13. You can see my diagram is definitely out of uh, proportion. That's okay. It's not drawn to scale. Okay, 
Um, so that's what we have so far. Okay, that's what the information has given us. Now we're looking for sine theta and tangent theta. Recall, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Right now we don't have the opposite side, but we can actually solve for opposite side quite easily by using Pythagorean theorem, right? So let me call this y. So the equation will be then phi squared plus y squared, I'm gonna move this to the right a little bit more, is equal to 13 squared. Okay, so I can solve for y. I need to evaluate phi squared first, that's 25. 13 squared is 169. My move 25 over to the right, you get y squared is 144. Again, you square root both sides. This time, again, we don't need to consider the negative case because we know y is going to be positive here. That's just the length, right? So y is 12. And this is your, your famous 5, 12, 13 triangle. Okay, again, if you know, that's great. If you don't know, that's fine. You can always figure it out by using Pythagorean theorem. So, but we do know that y is 12 now, okay? So then we can find out what sine theta is. It is simply opposite side out of, or divided by hypotenuse side, which is 13. Tangent theta is equal to opposite side, which is 12, divided by adjacent side, which is five. Okay, so that would be the answer. And again, you can find angle theta if you wanted to, it never ask us, but if you wanted to, you can simply um, take the inverse, because I can take this, and solve for theta by taking the inverse cosine of phi out of 13. Okay, whatever that is. I'm, I'm not gonna put it into calculus. It's not asked, okay? But you can definitely figure it out. All right, oh, so that's example two. So now we have the second example two. Okay, okay, that's example three. It says a forest ranger sees a smoke rising from a point that lies in the direction east 40 degrees north. I'll explain to you what that is in a second. She estimates that the distance from the ranger station is about 30 kilometers. The firefighters at the ranger station have to travel east and then north to get to the fire. To the nearest kilometer, how far should the firefighters travel in each direction? Okay, so east 40 degrees north. So trig is important when we talk about like directions, right? Maps. So trig is actually quite useful. Okay, anyway, so here we go. Here is my, again, axes. Um, get used to drawing these axes, and we're gonna draw a lot of these, okay? East 40 degrees north. What that means is we are gonna be starting at the east side, okay? So here is, okay, okay so now I'm, an, I'm not gonna judge anything right now, okay? I'm, I'm gonna make sure that everybody knows which one is which. This is north, this is south, this is east, and this is west, okay? Again, if you didn't know, that's okay. There you go, okay? North, south, east, and west. Um, so east, no, 40 degrees north means we are starting from the east direction. So here's east, 40 degrees north means we're gonna rotate 40 degrees towards north. So from east side, we're gonna rotate 40 degrees towards north. So this is 40 degrees, okay? So that is the diagram, okay? A fire a forest ranger sees the smoke uh, in this direction and it says she estimates the distance from the station so here is the ranger station here is the station she estimates that the distance is about 30 kilometers so this is 30 kilometers okay um, and it says the firefighters at the ranger station have to travel east so they need to go this direction this direction first and then this direction okay so it makes it a right triangle right here so here is my x and here is my y it says to the nearest kilometer how far should the firefighter travel in each direction so now we need to solve for x and y okay so this is simply you know a trick question that we actually learned how to solve last year right we need to so uh, set up the uh, equation using trick ratios now for solving for x, again, that's x. This is the adjacent side if we're looking from this angle, 40 degrees. So adjacent side and what's given is the hypotenuse side. So we need to use cosine. Cosine of the angle 40 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. I can solve for x by multiplying both sides by 30. So you get x is equal to cosine um, 30 cosine 40 degrees 
we can put this into calculator. I have no idea what this is. 30 cosine 40 degrees is equal to 20. We are around to the nearest kilometer, so this is 23 kilometers. This is actually 22.98. So if you round up, it's 23 kilometers. And now we can solve for y. Um, so this is the opposite side from the angle. So opposite and hypotenuse, which means we need to use sine. So sine of the angle 40 degrees is equal to opposite side, which is y, over hypotenuse, which is 30. Just like to solve for x there, we need to multiply both sides by 30 to isolate for y. Oops, sine, not cosine. Sine 40 degrees. Put this into calculator, you should get 19.28. So if we round to the nearest kilometer, it will be 19 kilometers. Okay? So hopefully this wasn't too difficult for you. Again, this is basically what we learned last year. Okay, special triangles. Uh, again, you may have seen this before in Math 10. I don't know if your teacher show you. Um, I did with my Math 10 students. So, um, but I can't assume anything, so I'm going to show you right now. Okay, special triangles. There are two special triangles, and I'll show you how um, I get those. Okay, so first of all, let's say I have a square, and um, I am going to cut this square in half okay so and i'm gonna say this is a one by one square okay one by one and i'm gonna cut this in half to make two triangles okay so i'm gonna cut it diagonally so you can see i will have two triangles now before i cut it i guess um this is 90 degrees right hopefully you know that um square right four angles all those four angles are 90 degrees and now if i cut this in half diagonally right here this would be 45 degrees this would also be 45 degrees so really this becomes this triangle 45 and 45 degrees and this is one and that's still one we can find the hypotenuse side quite easily by using pythagorean theorem right because this is still a right triangle let me call this h so that's one square which is one one square is one oh h squared sorry not just h this is h squared right that's a squared plus b squared is c squared so two is equal to h squared therefore h is equal to root two so this is root two okay so from here, I can actually fill in the middle part of the table. So this is 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. So if the angle is 45 degrees, you can see right here, sine of 45 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's 1 over root 2. Uh, then, of course, um, in the previous unit, we said that we do not like to have radicals in the denominator. So we can rationalize it by multiplying this by root 2 over root 2 which will give us root 2 over 2. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. Again, it's 1 over root 2, but we don't like to have radicals in the denominator, so we run, rationalize it by multiplying by root 2 over 2. Root 2 over root 2, so you end up with root 2 over 2 right here. For cosine, um, so again, I'm looking from this 45 degrees. It doesn't matter which one you look from, okay? You can also look from this 45 degrees. Cosine 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, it's 1 over root 2. But again, we can rationalize that and we get root 2 over 2. Finally, for tangent, tangent theta, tangent 45 is opposite side divided by adjacent side. So opposite is 1, adjacent is also 1. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. Okay, so this is your one of one of one of your two special triangles okay so I'll, I'll do the other one in blue so that's how you get the uh, first um, special triangle the other one is this one right here so I'm gonna draw you a uh, equilateral triangle okay so for e equilateral triangle what's special about this is that each angle is 60 degrees right it's, and all three side lengths are the same and I'm gonna say that each side is length 2 Okay, so just like the first diagram, I cut the square in half by, you know, slicing it diagonally. This time, again, I'm going to cut this equilateral triangle in half, and I'm going to just going to cut it right through the middle like that. Okay, so like this. So then this becomes a right triangle still because it's 
90 degrees, okay? This will be 60 degrees. Now, because we cut right in the middle, so this was 60. If we cut it in half, then this becomes 30. This is still two. Now, again, because we cut this in half, this was two. So if we cut it in half, then this becomes a one. Now we have a right triangle. We can find the, um, uh, let me call this X. Uh, let me call this Y actually. We can find the height of this triangle by again using Pythagorean theorem. One squared plus Y squared is equal to two squared. And A squared plus B squared is C squared. So that's one plus Y squared is equal to four. So for Y, by moving one over, you get three. You square root that, you get root three. Okay, so y is equal to root three. So now you can see that's 30 degrees. That's 60 degrees actually is these two angles that we have here. So sine theta, if we look from 30 degrees, so sine from here is opposite over hypotenuse. This is one over two. Cosine of 30 degrees, again from here, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's root three over two. Tangent finally is opposite over adjacent, so opposite is one, adjacent is root three, so this is one over root three. But again, we don't like to see um, radicals in the denominator, so I'm gonna rationalize that, so one over root three times root three over root three. This will give us root three over three. Okay, so this opposite side over adjacent side is actually gonna be root three over three. Okay, um, finally, for um, for 60 degrees, I'm going to do that in different color. I'll do that in green. So I'll erase this. I'll put that 60 degrees in green. Okay, so sine 60 is opposite over, adjacent, over hypotenuse, sorry. So this will be root 3 over 2 because opposite side now is y. Um, cosine 60 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 1 over 2. Notice how they just swap for the 30 degrees and 60 degrees, right? That's 1 half, that's 1 half. Root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. Okay, and um, tangent of 60, tangent of 60 is opposite side over adjacent side, so it's opposite is root 3 over 1, so that's just root 3. Okay, so this you might want to memorize. Okay, I mean, if you cannot memorize, then what you should memorize is these two triangles, which I think it's probably better. Okay, you should memorize these triangles. It's 1, 1, root 2, and 1, 2, root 3. Okay, again, 1, 1, root 2 for the 45, 45 degree triangle, 1, 2, root 3 for the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. These two triangles are going to be very, very useful. Okay. All right, uh, that's it for the first lesson in Unit 5. Uh, it's a little bit long, but I think it's very important that you understand 5.1 well, because if you don't, five, you're screwed for 5.2 and 5.3, okay? So again, 5.1 is extremely important. If you don't understand this, 5.2, 5.3, game over, okay? So make sure you do your practice questions. Let me know if you need help immediately, okay? All right, good luck.